Hello everyone, and welcome. Shandon here, Windows Engineer with CoreWeave Cloud. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating deploying a Windows Virtual Server with Parsec for Teams. Parsec is a cross-platform, low-latency, graphics-accelerated remote desktop application. For our demonstration, we'll first need to grab some information from our Parsec Teams account. If you're not already a Parsec Teams subscriber, visit parsec.app forward slash teams to sign up for your account. We'll go ahead and get signed into our existing account using a login link in the upper right hand portion of our screen. Once we're signed in, we'll be taken to our account page where we can see both our username, our user email and user ID. Our account page also gives us a link to our admin panel, which is where we'll go to find our additional information. The next item of information we'll need to grab is our Parsec Teams computer key. This can be generated by accessing the Teams computer tab on the left-hand side dashboard. Your Parsec Teams computer key is a unique identifier that will be used to authenticate new workstations to your Parsec Teams account. This key should be kept in a safe place. If your key is lost, you won't be able to access it from your Parsec Teams dashboard. You'll need to generate a new one, invalidating any previously generated keys. For our demonstration, we've already generated an existing key, so we won't generate a new one here. But for your purposes, if it's the first time you're generating a key, you'll go ahead and select the Generate a New Key button. Optionally, Parsec users and workstations can be assigned to a group which can be found from the Group Management tab on our dashboard. If we wish to join a virtual server to a group, we will also need its group ID. This can be located from the Edit tab on our desired group. With the information we need recorded from the Parsec Teams dashboard, we can go ahead and get our virtual server deployed. First, we'll navigate to our CoreWeave Cloud dashboard located at cloud.coreweave.com. Once we're signed in, we'll go ahead and deploy our virtual server using the Deploy Now button. On the Virtual Server Configuration page, there are several fields that require our attention before we can go ahead and deploy our virtual server. First of which being the name. This identifies our virtual server and is also used as the host name for the underlying virtual machine. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be calling our virtual server demo. For our region, because we're physically located closest to New York City, we'll go ahead and select our LGA1 data center. For our GPU, we'll switch to an RTX A4000 for the latest NVIDIA compute. For our core count, we'll increase to a healthy 16 cores and our RAM will bump to 64 gigs. For our operating system, we'll select Windows Server 2022, and we'll bump our root disk size to a bit more reasonable, 500 gigs. In a default configuration for Windows Virtual Servers with NVIDIA GPUs, Parsec Remote Desktop is a pre-selected software install option. Additionally, Virtual Displays is also selected, which Parsec requires for its remote display capture. For this demo, we will select the option to enroll our virtual server to Parsec Teams. Enabling this option provides us with a few input fields. Our computer key, which is the unique enrollment key we generated earlier, as well as our team ID, which is our unique team identifier. With only these fields populated, our virtual server will be enrolled unassigned. It can be assigned to a particular user or group from the Parsec Teams admin panel. Optionally, we can provide our virtual server the information it needs to pre-enroll to a more specific scope. We can provide the ID of a group or the ID or email address of a Parsec Teams user. For this demo, we'll assign the virtual server to the email of an existing Parsec Teams user. With our Parsec Teams information filled out, we can complete the configuration of our virtual server. 
Since Parsec utilizes Stun to broker communication between server and client, a public IP is not required for our Parsec team's virtual server. The last option we'll need to fill out is user account information for the Windows local account on the virtual machine. With that information provided, we can go ahead and deploy our virtual server. Once our virtual server is deployed, its root disk will be cloned from our repository of images. Allow roughly three to five minutes for our virtual server to complete its initial startup procedures. Once our virtual server has completed its startup procedures, we're presented with a warning notifying us that Windows is only outputting to the virtual display used by Parsec. Because of this, our virtual server is not accessible from our cloud dashboard. Instead, we'll need to access our virtual server using the Parsec application. In this case, we're already signed in with our Parsec Teams account, so we can go ahead and connect to our virtual server that we just spun up. At our Windows desktop, we can see that our virtual server is configured with the specifications that we desired in our virtual server configuration page. Our virtual server can then be shut down from a normal Windows shutdown prompt. We can then disconnect our Parsec session, and we can see on our cloud dashboard, our virtual server has switched to its stopped state. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demonstration on deploying a Parsec Teams machine with CoreWe virtual servers. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the CoreWeave YouTube channel.